Okay, so hello and welcome to our webinar, introducing the newest member of the NextGen product family, MetaTouch. My name is Chelsea Grover and I'm the Marketing Communications Coordinator for Attentive Healthcare Solutions. Before we get started, I wanted to go over the process for today's webinar. First, I want to mention that it will be recorded. We're going to send out recordings of this copy within the next week, so keep your eyes out for that. So a little bit of who we are. Itena has been in, in business since 2003, but we've been next-gen users since 1997 EPM version 2.3. We specialize specifically in next-gen healthcare. Our goal in life is to make delighted clients by helping them get the absolute most out of their next-gen software investments. We're passionate about providing solutions for healthcare provider partners, which in turn help them to improve patient care, enhance the patient experience, and maintain a financially healthy practice. To sum it up, we do everything next-gen. Okay, so I wanted to mention some upcoming webinars that we have. On June 28th, we're going to be presenting Using NextGen PM as a Support Tool, Getting Data to Make Sound Business Decisions. So keep your eyes out for a webinar invitation for that. We're going to take all the questions to the end, but you can type them in the questions webinar control panel whenever they occur to you. And again, we'll answer all of them at the end. So I wanted to present our presenters for today's webinar. Uh, first is Lindsay Lanning, she is Healthcare Compliance Consultant, Jordan Nurswick, who is Product Manager, and Cindy Kincaid, who is Vice President of Consulting Solutions. All of them work for Attend of Healthcare Solutions, and we're all excited to have them join with us today. So Lindsay, I'm going to go ahead and hand it off to you. Please feel free to get started when you're ready. Great, thank you, Chelsea. Hi, everyone, and thank you for joining us today for our webinar, introducing the newest member of the NextGen product family, MetaTouch. Now, I'm sure a lot of you are curious about the newest member of this NextGen product suite and what it has to offer. We've heard from a multitude of clinicians expressing interest in this new product, so it's our hope that this presentation introduces you to MetaTouch and provides you with a thorough overview. While this webinar won't show you all of the features and functionality of MetaTouch, we will review the EHR, specifically focusing on how an encounter note is built. We will look at documentation of medications, patient history, ROS, and sign-off features. We will then transition to reviewing practice management, highlighting various features such as scheduling and real-time eligibility checking. We will then briefly look at the MetaTouch patient portal and wrap things up by looking at the MetaTouch macro dashboard. So let's start off by getting to know MetaTouch. MetaTouch offers a unique array of features intended to make your practice adoption of an EHR technology more straightforward. It's completely cloud-based, meaning there's nothing to download and install, and the system comes preloaded with many of the codes and forms required to get started. So the system's completely cloud-based. It's a web-based EHR that operates through your internet browser and is accessible on multiple devices. Built from the ground up for mobile medicine and optimized for any platform, MetaTouch is the EHR that goes where you go. Now, this is a quote from Health Fusion's website, and I actually included it to point out, MetaTouch really emphasizes its ability to chart on the go and easily access patient data and records from anywhere that has an internet connection. Providers can access MetaTouch from home or while traveling, whether you're on a desktop, a laptop, or a tablet, Cloud-based EHR systems allow you to stay connected with your patients and staff outside of the office. This ability, I think, really promotes more effective collaboration and also provides a better continuity of care for your patients. Not to mention, it's become pretty clear lately that mobile medicine is the future of healthcare. So what does it really mean to be mobile? Well, in MetaTouch's case, they focus on efficiency for the provider and being able to work anywhere without physical boundaries. They do this by highlighting a provider's ability to touch, talk, or type. Since MetaTouch is optimized for touch, fingertip data entry is fast and easy. In addition, MetaTouch is also designed to populate data via dictation in any text field. Actually, with all iPads, dictation functionality is built in and can be used to replace typing for faster data entry without the need to invest in expensive dictation software. So this voice recognition capability allows providers to chart using verbal cues and commands, which I think we all know is a great time saver, and enables providers to make the most out of each patient visit, actually allowing them to personally interact with the patient. I do want to point out it works on all platforms, tablets, laptops, desktops, and either Windows or Mac. So, whether you prefer touch, talk, or typing, 
MetaTouch is flexible enough to support the best data input method for you on your choice of device type. So let's just dive right in and look at the MetaTouch EHR and its features. If we start with the very basics, when you log into HealthFusion and navigate to the EHR, the EHR homepage is the first thing you're going to see. It's easily accessible and it's really a one-stop shop for users to navigate to different parts of the application. Features found on the homepage are going to be the top, left, and bottom toolbars, and then you have the dashboard. So for those features I just mentioned, I outlined in red in this screenshot. These are all the areas we're going to look at in more detail. I just wanted you to get a sense of where these toolbars were and how the user would navigate to them. So you can see the toolbar at the top in blue above that MetaTouch logo. Another is on the left-hand side with several icons. And then the one at the bottom with larger blue navigational buttons. And then in the center or the body of the page, we see what's called the dashboard. So if we start by looking at that top blue bar, we can see there's a gear icon, and this actually allows the user to change practices, uh, log out, or even change their password. You can also click the Health Fusion MetaTouch heading, and you can see software details or session information, and this pop-up will come up. When a patient is open, you're going to notice that their HF record number, uh, their name, date of birth, the date of service, and even their age will show in the middle of the toolbar just as a quick reference for the provider. Now, if you wanted to close the patient chart, you could go ahead and click that file icon with the X on it. Next to that, there's also a MetaTouch search option. So if the user clicks that, a quick search feature will actually drop down for you to find something on that page. You can also view your messages in a collapsible side panel. So this pop-up will show up. It can go uh, out and in. It's really just a preview of what you would see in the full messages module. And then you also have the ability to view your tasks in a very similar side panel. You can also view pharmacy alerts. This is where all incoming prescriptions will go. You can manage all outgoing requests by uh, approving, denying, or signing off on mid-level ERXs. You can also view orders. This button will essentially allow the user to manage all orders in the practice. The button will be red if there are any overdue items or abnormal results that need to be addressed. And then lastly, you can view your notifications and again, another collapsible side panel. So right now, this provider that we took a screenshot of had no new notifications, but the functionality is there. So essentially, if you are a NextGen user, this toolbar acts like your PAQ. Now, something we find really useful that I just wanted to mention here is that all doctors have access to each other's prescription refills and lab results. It's not locked down by user. So if one provider is on vacation, someone else can actually manage their orders that are coming in. Now looking at the toolbar on the left-hand side, we have even more icons that either act as links or perform an action. First, we have the View Patient Tracker dashboard, which we saw when we originally looked at the home page. Then we have the Click the EHR Search. This is actually to look up a patient, a chart, or an encounter. You have the print icon, which essentially converts any template that's open into formatted text for printing. The image icon actually allows the user to attach images to a patient chart. The document icon uh, essentially allows the user to edit a note for the current patient open. And then we have the check mark icon. That allows the user to create a task, a staff message, a patient message, a chart note, or even a chart alert. And then that last icon there actually opens the macro overview dashboard. So two icons on this list I wanted to highlight right away are the image icon and the checkmark icon. The image icon is pretty cool in that it allows the user to attach images to a patient chart. The user can actually choose from a document library to upload a patient image or take an image of a report, such as an x-ray, instead of scanning it in. The user can also draw on images from the document library to better document patient procedures. So one big plus here is that this has actually allowed some of our clients to remove imaging interfaces, since you can take a picture of reports and shred them. Also, also for 
any of you who had HIPAA red flags and alarms going off in your head when I said you could actually take a picture of the patient, let's say if they had a rash on their arm, these images are saved in the EHR to a patient chart. They are not stored on the device's camera roll. The other icon I wanted to highlight is the checkmark icon. This icon allows you to create a task, a staff message, patient message, chart note or chart alert. You'll notice this template does default to tasks, but it can be changed at the top. And again, the user can choose to view whichever staff message, patient message, or task, but you can actually sort it by priority level. And once you select these, they'll display in a grid below by subject, date received, and patient. So this is essentially a tasking feature. It will attach a task to the patient chart and various templates, either medications, orders, or even documents, really wherever you are in the chart. And then we have the bottom toolbar. This has the dashboard button, which will open that dashboard or schedule, which is the page we started on with the home page. You have the practice management button, which allows a pretty easy transition between the two. A task and messages button, documents button. You'll see the pharmacy alerts and orders buttons again. And then you'll also notice buttons will be created for previous patients viewed. This allows quick access to reopen a chart. And these buttons show the patient's HF number and patient name. And you're going to notice that 10 plus patients will show on this toolbar. And if there ever gets to be that many, arrows will show up to move left to right through the bottom toolbar. So I'm sure you notice by now there's a lot of overlap between the three toolbars, especially with tasks and messages, pharmacy alerts, and orders. This is done on purpose for the sole reason that when using the system on an iPad or a tablet, MetaTouch didn't want the users to have to scroll up and down constantly to get to where they wanted to go. So again, we're seeing this idea of being mobile at the core of its design. And then lastly, we have the dashboard. And this is essentially the EHR homepage. It includes the schedule, open encounters, recent patients, and much more. So if we look at each tab on the dashboard, we can start with the patient tracker. Here you can click the resource name to change the calendar resource. You can click the schedule button to change the schedule viewed, and that'll change it to encounters. You can also click the date field to change the date. And then you can also check the hide checked out button, and it will hide all checked out patients from the schedule. So again, um, on this same page, just a few more things to point out here. To actually open the scheduled encounter, you would just click the time button next to the patient's name. If you do click the patient's name, it will actually open a chart preview. Clicking the appointment type button will actually open the PM appointment details. And edits can be made to the prior priority, rendering provider, room. You can even add comments and any follow-up information as well. And then the wait field basically shows the appointment status if the patient's been checked in, checked out, or if they're new. I mentioned you could change the view from schedule to encounter. Now, by switching to the encounter view, providers can see the diagnosis and if the encounter has been signed off on or not. Our providers have given us a lot of positive feedback on this feature because they use it daily as a kind of checklist for them to know if they're done documenting or not. The next tab we have is the room tracker. Um, this tab just shows exam rooms and procedure rooms with current patient information. There is also the option to hit that wallboard mode to expand the grid to full screen if you needed. Again, not a ton of clients are using this currently, but just wanted to point it out. Then we have the two-hour view sub-tab. This is essentially a two-hour view of the schedule and shows all patients within the desired time frame for multiple providers. There are buttons to move back or forward in two-hour increments. So a lot of offices have found this to be extremely useful since it is showing multiple provider schedules for the next two hours and not just one. The location view tab can be helpful if you have multiple locations to worry about. It shows all locations with scheduled appointments. And again, the resource and date can be changed at the top here. 
And then this recent patient subtab shows all the patients that have been previously accessed by the user. Clicking the HF chart number will actually open the patient's chart. Um, and you can see we kind of listed out the information that's available in the grid when you have the full screen available. And then this last tab here is the Open Encounters tab. It allows you to view all open encounters. And you can filter this grid by type of encounter, status, rendering, signed by, location, patient, and even 30 or 60 or 90 day increments. From this template, you can also directly open and complete an encounter. Basically, this will show the user any encounters that need to be signed off on. All right, so finally leaving the home page and actually entering a patient's chart through one of the many links I just went over, we will be greeted with another toolbar. <laughs> Don't worry, we won't go through each of these tabs, uh, but once you see this toolbar at the top, you know you're actually in a patient chart. I do want to point out, um, using these tabs, you're actually not documenting in the patient chart. You're documenting in the patient chart, just not in an encounter. So some providers will use these tabs to add information once an encounter is signed off on. And again, um, these tabs are defaulted to remain on the screen regardless of where the user goes in the chart. So we're just going to look at the, at the chart tab. Um, this shows patient information that you can toggle between using the tabs right above the patient picture. This first tab basically allows you to view the patient's chart details their demographics, active problems, orders, encounters, et cetera. There's also access to subtabs for health maintenance, the longitudinal health record, and care plan oversight. Now the health maintenance tab allows the user to view if quality measurements for the encounter were met. This template applies to health maintenance and MIPS reporting. So this tool is really nice because it shows you quality reporting specific information. But it varies based on client because, as we know, everyone has different measures and programs they're reporting on. Next, we have the Longitudinal Record tab. This allows the user to view the patient's comprehensive longitudinal health record. There's a grid for a timeline of clinical, clinically significant data, which can be graphed. So what we've seen with providers who are currently live on the system is that almost every provider will go to this tab prior to a visit. It will show them medical history, surgical history, active pregnancies, medications, um, OB history. This can get really long, but it gives the provider one place to go to see what they need to before a visit. This page also allows the provider to trend clinically significant data. So providers can trend lab results or really anything in the chart if they click the yellow star. It will add it to this page, and you can see trending data in one place. And lastly, the Care Plan Oversight tab. This essentially lists the patient's last encounter and insurance types. The top of the template is used to enter new records, and the bottom portion is a CPO record log, which again can be filtered. Now that we were in the patient chart, what we really want to do is access an encounter and start documenting. To do this, the user would access an encounter from the schedule by clicking on that time button. The user can also click on the encounters tab while in the patient chart. However, what we've seen the majority of our providers doing is using that schedule button. Documenting in an encounter has certain features that emphasize the being mobile mindset, such as the fingertip touch, having dual view pullouts, and again, the ease of dictation. But the two things I want to hone in on for documentation purposes are that encounter notes follow a traditional SOAP note format, and there are two ways to document in this format, either by using the SOAP toolbar or by clicking on the active text links. So here's a screenshot of an encounter for a test patient. You can use the left-hand toolbar to navigate between the SOAP note sections. Right now, we're on this objective section. Above the SOAP tab is actually the chart summary tab, which is the blue square I highlighted in green. It opens and closes and allows the user to preview other information in the chart, think of uh, last appointment, procedures, or allergies, while they're actually documenting in a current section. 
providers, again, have found this chart summary extremely useful when documenting. Here you can see the objective se section um, with the chart summary still open, documenting things such as vitals, problems lists, and physical exam. Next we have the assessment section. You will notice the chart summary is collapsed, so you actually have that full page view. This assessment section is meant to be very easy in adding codes. Diagnosis codes are actually suggested to the user based on the chief complaint. And overall, the feedback we've received on this section specifically is that there are a lot less clicks making documentation easier on providers. And then lastly, we have the plan section. This is where users would do orders, the care plan, and document procedures. This is also the final step to select CPT codes to submit to billing. The other method to document in an encounter is to use the active links. So if you were to click on the blue encounter button at the top, you will see the encounter note, and you can click on the active text links, and it will take you to that section of document. So it really depends on provider preference how they want to do that. So we've made it through a high-level overview of the EHR. I think we can start to understand a big advantage of MetaTouch as a whole system are the time-saving benefits while documenting. And one feature that contributes to that are the blueprints. Blueprints allow users to pre-save a visit type. When the user selects a blueprint, it actually auto-populates an encounter note. The user can pick and choose from the pre-saved template what to pull forward, and then just has to document by exception. Almost all of our clients use this feature to document. So this tool can essentially pre-fill the chief complaint um, in all normal physical exams. It can pre-fill diagnosis codes and CPT codes, patient education, and even a basic provider plan. The provider would then need to document by exception. That's crucial. But on average, this is saving our providers about 10 minutes per visit. The other biggest time-saving feature is dictation. The dictation capability comes with the application, which means no fees. It works with any operating system's internal dictation system. And we've actually found that Apple's dictation works very well with medical terminology. Users can document using dictation anywhere there's a text field. They would just need to select the piece of paper icon you can see on your screen. And essentially, a mini Microsoft Word window appears. The users can then just dictate directly. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to our own MetaTouch expert, Jordan, who will go ahead and take us through MetaTouch PM and Portal. So Jordan, it is all yours. OK, great. Thank you, Lindsay. So hi, everyone. Um, we're going to take a few minutes, as Lindsay said, to look over the MetaTouch practice management features. So. Um, this is the first screen that you'll see when you log into MetaTouch um, Practice Management or if you transition from the EHR. And this screen is, um, you can see at the top there's some basic navigation. So instead of like icons, which some EHRs use, we just use this top blue toolbar uh, for navigation. So MetaTouch has numerous practice management functions. Um, however, we've decided to highlight just a few of the features. Um, we're going to look at the real-time eligibility request, patient registration, patient scheduling, the check-in and check-out processes, charge entry, um, claim submission, and reporting. So for starters, um, this image is a great example of how I mentioned that top of blue toolbar. Uh, so you simply just click on or hover your mouse over a heading uh, in the white at the top, and then submenu items are displayed for that section below. So in this instance, our cursor is on real time, giving us access to the eligibility request. Um, this is an awesome feature that allows a user to request insurance information directly from a payer and then cre actually create the patient chart um, with that set of patient demographics. So here is a more detailed look at the process. Um, and so the user basically inputs the required information. And now each uh, payer actually requires a different set of search parameters. 
Um, but once completed, the information is then sent to the payer, and it's returned within seconds for each patient, or with um, a patient match. So then when the patient information is returned, you can see in the front image, um, it includes various details such as the EOB information, um, plan and coverage data, copay details, um, and pre-cert and referral data. And then from this screen, um, what is so nice about this is it actually allows the user to create the patient chart with this information. And so this really cuts down on the manual data entry coming from um, the front desk staff or the billing staff. And since this directly coincides with the insurance, it drastically reduces the amount of denials that are returned to the practice. So the second option to register a patient is simply by going to patients, register a patient, and then manually entering that data. And so here we can see an image of what that page looks like, and there are yellow fields which are mandatory. Um, and then across the top we have some subcategories of the chart um, that just include things like information and guarantor. So we're going to go through those subtabs over the next few slides. Uh, so this is what the patient insurance looks like. Um, the yellow fields, of course, are mandatory. And then one of the most popular features of adding a patient insurance is just our ability to search for an existing insurance profile. Um, this is, of course, helpful because it allows us to go ahead and link, say, a parent's insurance to an additional child um, as the patient comes in. So that really saves time and um, with data entry. The uh, guarantor page is another place just to store additional information. Here, again, we also have a search feature so that you can search existing profiles that are already in the system and then link those to the current patient. There is a patient associations page, uh, and this is just a, another place to store information um, such as the patient's PCP, referring provider, and you can also add the patient's um, preferred pharmacies here. So this is a nice spot. And then we have the authorizations. So um, this is just a place to store and manage patient authorizations. This is where you'd simply select to create a new authorization and enter the necessary data. Um, once they were entered, you would see a list of authorizations on the left. And then when selected, you'd see that individual data in the fields on the right. And I've actually been told by practices that this specifically has really saved a lot of time in simplifying the authorization process within offices. So that's always nice to hear. And so next we have the patient messages. And this is just a place where the practice can input messages or chart alerts. Um, and these are alerts that can be added onto scheduling or on billing or on both. Um, and so we all know the importance of scheduling and billing alerts. Um, this one is very easy to use. Okay, so and this is just a basic preview of the chart. So we just kind of looked at the details within a chart, um, but this would be like the home page of the patient's chart. And so you can see on the left just the basic demographic information um, with insurance information if it was entered. And then on the right, we can see a summary of the patient's claim and payment history, patient's balance. Um, we can see the patient's appointments and print future appointments, things like that. The recalls, um, patient messages and alerts. And then we can also see their authorization. So another place to access all of those sections that we just looked at. Okay, so now we will take a look at the um, scheduling process and some of the front end workflows. Okay, so to access the, the daily schedule, which is where the front desk would work off of, we would just go to schedule and daily schedule. And this is what it would look like. So it is Pretty straightforward. We can see the um, there's some filters up top so that we can switch the days that we're viewing. You can switch the provider resources being viewed and also the location. Um, there's also a quick print icon so that you can simply print the schedule from here versus having to run reports and things like that. Um, and then what is displayed on the schedule below, you see the um, appointment time, 
the billing slip if it's already been generated, so we can click and print that. Uh, the patient chart number, the patient's name, appointment details, provider, and um, then the appointment status information. Um, so what's nice about this, just a note, whenever you see blue fields in MetaTouch, they are hyperlinks, meaning I can click on them and they're going to take me to that place. So they're really um, just reinforcing that idea of being mobile and quick access to what you need um, without a lot of navigation. So here is just another detailed look at the uh, daily schedule. And so what we're seeing here is the process that the front desk would actually be taking. Um, by putting their mouse and clicking on that appointment time, you actually get a submenu of the, um, the appointment features and functionalities that we need. So by clicking on 8 o'clock, we could check the patient's eligibility, so send that out to the insurance if for some reason it wasn't already showing as active. You could view and edit the appointment. You could confirm the appointment, check it in, check it out, um, so any of these features. And so you can kind of get a feel for how we work off of the daily schedule. So a scheduling appointment, um, again, very straightforward. From the calendar view, a user would simply select the time that they wish to make an appointment. Um, an appointment book then displays, um, allowing the patient, or I'm sorry, the staff member to select the appointment type, uh, attach the patient, and then any appointment notes that need to be added. And from this screen, the user can also choose to create and add a new patient if they haven't been previously registered. So that's kind of a time-saving tool that they have. And so then we'll look at the appointment check-in and check-out. So the check-in is a very quick and easy process. Of course, it pulls the information from the scheduled data. But at the time of check-in, any of these details can be changed um, and adjusted. And here, the user can also collect co-payments and patient payments. It's not listed on this image, but we'll see it on the checkout. So the MetaTouch checkout option is available, um, of course, once the patient's already been checked in. And from the checkout, you actually have, it's, it's really cool, you have the um, option to do a handful of different things. You can print the patient's encounter form. You can schedule a follow-up appointment. You can print their payment receipts. You can add the patient to a recall list. You can post a payment. And you can also go straight to charge entry. So um, this is a preview of what the checkout screen looks like. And you can see here in the red box at the top, those are the features that I just mentioned. So they're just quick links so that you can go to those um, functions. And then um, in the EHR, so there's actually something that's kind of cool, the provider can actually complete a follow-up, um, like a follow-up message, and it will actually send to the checkout. So this allows the checkout person to see follow-up in three weeks or whatever the provider may try to communicate um, to the front desk, which really closes that communication gap of the provider telling the patient when to return um, or having to write it on a fee ticket. And so you can imagine um, that being a smoother process. It also automatically adds the patient to a recall list, saving some time there. Um, and then at the bottom of the screen, you can see the uh, copayment and payment options. And this is exactly the same thing that's on the check-in as well. So from here, I could apply a payment, um, to either the copay or just an outstanding balance. And then you could proceed to charge entry, or you could simply save this and move to your next patient. So we are just going to transition over to the claims. Um, and the screen we're looking at now is actually in the EHR, so if a physician is going to be responsible for adding CPT codes to the visit, um, this is the screen that they would use. And after the codes are selected, they simply click Generate PM Billing, this little blue button up there, and then the charges are sent over to PM for the billing staff to view. And so before we look at the claims, um, we're going to take a pit stop at something called the Day End Review. This is a very cool feature um, offered by MetaTouch. And it allows um, the user to view a schedule and basically see a summary of the appointments, the payments collected, any missing charges, um, once the charges have been submitted by the doctor. So it's essentially like a daily balance report, but it's active and you don't have to generate a report to see the data. 
Um, so it's really awesome. And the user can, so you could see the code submitted from the EHR, and you could simply click the claim number to jump into the claim, or you can click on the far right where it says enter and start the claim and enter the charges from here. So this is a look at the charge entry screen. Um, pretty standard screen. It, if the information is already filled out by the provider, then it will just be sent over here. At that point, it can just be edited or changed as needed. Um, if it hasn't been filled in, of course, the, um, the staff would fill that in. It's one of those screens where you just click your dates, your enter your CPT codes, which all of our fee schedules are um, created based on the payer, and then you would or select your um, codes, your ICD-10 codes. So just another look at the charge entry screen. So you can see in the red box across the top, there are some different tabs um, that are completed as you go through this process. Um, but one of the things that is really cool and we use a lot are is the notes tab. And that's the very last one there. And you can actually preview the signed encounter note um, from that visit without having to go into the EHR or um, navigate away from where you are in the page. So it actually opens a second window with um, that signed encounter note so that you can look at the um, documentation from the day. And so this is just a quick look at where the claims are managed. Um, individual claims can be opened from here. They can also be selected and submitted in groups. Uh, and then across the top, you can see that there are just some additional tabs for the different payer or electronically accepted and rejected tabs. And um, these are organized by payer. And this just really helps facilitate that um, very diligent management of claims in the practice. So um, we'll just talk about reporting real quick, and then we're going to jump over and take a look at the patient portal. Um, so MetaTouch has a very comprehensive reporting suite, and it allows users to run um, data on things such as the accounts receivable, appointments, charges, clinical data, demographics, payments, um, so just to name a few things. And one of the nice features about their reporting is that you can actually schedule your reports to be run at a specified time or date. So for an example, I can schedule an appointment report to run at 6 a.m. every day. And therefore, when the user logs in, they can simply open and print that appointment report, first having to edit it, generate it, and wait for a report to load. Um, this is also commonly used for monthly reports. So for example, if you want to run an AR report on the 30th of the month, or maybe even the second Thursday of every month, um, you can set that schedule. And then when you log in, that will be waiting for you at that day. Um, this feature like really reduces the traffic of people editing, running um, reports. It saves a lot of time for users who traditionally wait for large practice reports to load, and it also helps administration manage what reports need to be run and when. So, okay, so now we're going to just take a look at the MetaTouch patient portal. So MetaTouch uses a patient portal that is called Your Health File. Um, and this is a private and secure way for your patients to access their portal or their personal health record and also communicate with the office. And this portal is integrated with MetaTouch EHR and has been revered as a sophisticated and user-friendly portal that when used will improve your quality of care um, while enhancing your clinical efficiency and a practice revenue. So the portal has various features which can be turned off or on depending on the practice needs. Uh, and some of the available options are the ability for co-branding, which allows you to display your, um, your practice's logo on the portal as well as on the patient emails. And then it also is very easy to attach access to the portal on your own um, practice's website. And then we also have a patient messaging feature, which allows the patient to directly message a recipient in the office for non-emergent matters. So this is a preview of what the portal looks like. Um, the top image is the login screen. So um, it's actually not viewed here, but it is powered by Google Translate. So um, the patient has the ability to 
put their portal in like over 70 different languages just by a quick drop-down list. Um, so I know that feature is used with some of our offices currently. Um, and then the second image is just a home page view of what the patient sees. And you can see here it's colorful, it's easy to read. Um, and all of these colored blocks are individual features that I'll show some benefits on, but they can be turned off or on based on the practice's needs. Um, and you can, so you can see the red box, starting with the red box, you can, the patient can view their statements and pay their balances. They can schedule or request an appointment. They can check in for their appointment. They can request a medication refill, view their medical record, or message. It says message a doctor, but just message someone at the practice. And so this is another screen that just kind of shows an additional navigation um, page in the patient portal. And I'm just going to highlight some of the benefits of the portal from here. So really the patient has the ability to access the physician's schedule availability. Um, they can also request appointments online. So this eliminates the staff spending time with requests and phone calls. Um, the patients have the ability to add to their own medical record, which eliminates a lot of data entry on the clinical end um, and reduces errors associated with data entry. Um, one of the features that actually makes this portal so unique is our patient clinical check-in. And so the practice can actually select the data that they want a patient to complete before their visit. Um, common things that our practices use right now are um, the HPI and the review of systems. And so these are presented to the patient in a question-answer format, so it's easy to complete. And if this is used, the intake staff will already have like the HPI and the review of systems completed when the patient walks through the door. And it can be as detailed as the note already saying that the patient is presenting with abdominal pain um, that is sharp and stabbing, and it's been occurring for seven to 10 days. So, that is just really nice and reduces the amount of time that the intake staff spends um, inputting this data. And then so the patient can also complete their review of systems, which I mentioned, which is nice to have done. Um, and then they have access to update their medical record based on the access you give them, um, which can involve their social history, things like tobacco usage, their medications, their medical, surgical, and family history. So some additional benefits. Um, are the patient portal medication requests. Um, so you can imagine that cuts down on phone calls and communication with pharmacies and with the patients. Um, the immunization module aligns with the CDC trial and immunization records. So this is actually great because your patient can log on and print their immunization records for school or work um, without having to make that call into the office. And that can just, of course, save a lot of time with the staff and with your office resources. And then on the billing side, if you allow your patients to view their online statements, there's actually a feature to ask the biller um, payment questions. And so you can just imagine that the, how this reduces phone calls and just makes that billing process that much easier um, for the patient and for the office. And lastly, we have a secure messaging feature, which I've mentioned. Um, this is compliant with meaningful use standards, and it allows providers to use the online portal to seamlessly sorry, communicate their lab results to the patient, as well as um, any information and messages relating to the patient's care. So you can actually, in the EHR from the order itself, select to message the patient the result or just a message straight from there. So it is it's very um, it's slick. It works really well. So knowing these details, um, you can clearly see how the portal empowers the patients to become true partners in their health care um, while being able to easily interact with your practice. And these features combined do really help clinical staff optimize their time spent with the patient and improve the accuracy of their documentation. Um, which in turn results in increased quality care. All right, Jordan, thank you so much. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take over and just briefly touch on MetaTouch and MACRA. So with so much buzz surrounding quality reporting in the past two years and 
now with this brand new program under MACRA, I think the first thing we want to point out here is that MetaTouch is a certified EHR. MetaTouch has stated MetaTouch Complete EHR is 2014 compliant, and it's been certified by the ONC in accordance with the applicable certification criteria. We all know having a certified EHR is a requirement under MACRA, especially for MIPS reporting, and it's oftentimes one of the first questions we get about this new system from our providers. So under this relatively new piece of legislation, eligible clinicians need to report on three performance categories if they're planning to report under MIPS in 2017. So these are quality, advancing care information, and improvement activities. Now, each of these categories have their own set of requirements and a different point system, but we won't be looking at that today. What we will be looking at is how MetaTouch helps providers be successful in MIPS reporting. MetaTouch makes MIPS reporting easy through the MACRA dashboard. This dashboard can be reached any time a provider is in the EHR by just simply clicking on the gauge icon found on that left-hand toolbar. So when the user clicks this, they're going to be taken to this page where they can choose a provider and a reporting period up at the top that I have squared off. Um, this page actually shows an overview of a provider's progress, and it really gives a nice summary of the requirements under MIPS under each category. Now, obviously, with this screenshot, we're seeing zeros and a lot of red. That's just because this was taken from our test database. A real provider would have actual data. Taking a look at the quality category first, which is essentially the old PCRS program, these measures are managed via the health maintenance module in the patient's chart and also in the quality measure patient list. So MetaTouch actually supports 47 measures and automatically groups the top six recommended measures at the top of the page. Outcome and high priority measures are identified on screen by measure tags under the measure name. And then users can actually hover over the measure for the description or click the question mark icon to read how a user can meet the measure using MetaTouch. So if you were to click on the quality section, you would see this page. And then you would also notice the top six measures that the provider is performing on are automatically pulled to the top. You can see there are measure tags underneath the measure names. You can also hover over measure to see the description of it. Um, again, click on that question mark to see white papers on how to pass a measure. You can also click on the progress bar to see numerator and denominator data, and also any patient failings or the equivalent of a treatment opportunity report that's in the next gen HQM. To enroll or even disenroll in a measure that you don't want to test on or you don't want to track, you just need to select the corresponding checkbox next to it. And you can, um, if you click the Actions link here, you can actually export a patient list to an Excel or a PDF. So on to the next category, Advancing Care Information. This is essentially, again, that old Meaningful Use program. And MetaTouch allows the user to perform actions required under MIPS, such as performing a security risk analysis, um, e-prescribe and perform medication reconciliations, engage the patient population with the patient portal, which we just went over, um, create consult orders and direct messages to other providers to comply with that health information exchange measure, and then finally, if relevant, connect to an immunization registry. Now, without going into the nitty-gritty detail of each measure in the ACI, ACI category, uh, MetaTouch offers some really easy ways to track patients for the portal, um, also for secure messaging that allows just a few clicks to meet the measures. It really, really is physician friendly and helping the provider meet these requirements. And then finally, um, another great feature, which we'll see here in a moment, is that the ACI portion of the MACRA dashboard actually tracks the base score, the performance score, and your composite score. So here you can see the measure of progress is shown in a similar way compared to the quality category. You can still hover over the measure for a description or click that question mark for more information. What I like are the scores at the top. If you're familiar with the ACI category, you know you have two scores in this, in this category alone, the base score and the performance score. And these are both calculated for you as well as the composite score. 
It's a really nice feature, and it takes the work off the provider from converting percentages to points and then to your overall score. And lastly, uh, the brand new category here, which is improvement activities. So MetaTouch provides guidance for recommended measures based on provider population and EHR features. Ultimately, providers can attest to any measure they believe was performed and is provable. Users just need to put a check mark next to an activity. They can then actually upload policy and procedures, um, care coordination agreements, or community resources to back that up in this system as well. So you can see here, users just need to simply check the activities they're doing, and your score will change at the top. Again, same features for hovering um, the question mark icon as well, um, also toggling between providers and changing the reporting periods at the top. OK, thank you, Lindsay and Jordan. And thank you for pulling all that information together. So. Um, where does MetaTouch fit in the fam NextGen family? This is Cindy, and I've been working with this and have coordinated and worked with NextGen uh, as soon as we found out about this product because we were very excited to move forward. So basically, I'm just going to talk through a few things that we've talked about what it does do. I'm going to tell you some of the things it does not do. First of all, there is uh, a limitation with um, our, F for our FQHC friend. There's a lot of functionality in here, uh, but NextGen, as they're adding their power and their development capabilities to this, we'll be adding CCD report or um, CDA reporting and all of the things that you're going to be needing in terms of you know, FQHC reporting and being able to do that. It doesn't accommodate that today. It's not an enterprise model. We did talk about multiple practices, but you can have multiple practices, but they are entirely separate. There's no integration of data. There's no enterprise environment that will allow you to bring the data together. What it does offer is the flexibility, and we have used it and how it has worked in our groups, is we've had some very large management companies that we work with, or we have companies that, for whatever reason, there is a provider that maybe isn't um, moving in the next-gen direction as much as they would like. So you can now mix and match, because it's all one family. There is an integration to practice management, so you can have EPM power your uh, group, and then you can have certain groups of providers on one product and the others on another. Again, there's no data sharing between those two in that environment, so you would be giving that up. So you want to be careful when you look at those opportunities. If you have a scenario where you're having a lot of hardware or upgrade costs or things of that nature, we have found that some of the smaller provider groups, the independent provider groups that are working to remain independent, or if they're a specialty such as dermatology or something of that nature, and they maybe aren't um, in a position to continue the overhead requirements of next-gen, because this is cloud-based and because it is smaller-based and it utilizes the Apple product family and some of the lower-end environment, you can utilize it there. There is a conversion from, from next-gen to MetaTouch, and next-gen has worked together because, again, it's one family now. So we would be able to answer any questions about where it might work, or I'm sure your next-gen salesperson would if you're thinking, hey, this is a great opportunity. What I think it shows, though, is that next-gen, we all know next-gen is going more for a cloud-based environment. And what you'll be seeing in 5.9 and 8.4 are some of the functionality that MetaTouch offers that, frankly, NextGen didn't, such as the being able and scheduling to go one week, two weeks, one month. That's something that's a little nice feature, but I know at a large client user group meeting I just attended, that was really popular. Everyone was excited about it. And for those of you who are interested in MetaTouch or we moved to the cloud, you'll be seeing some of the NextGen functionality move into its environment. And you'll see more of the security features and more of its advanced reporting features and some of the things that MetaTouch, while very, very simple for providers to use, perhaps doesn't give you the drill down capabilities that you have in NextGen. So there's a place for both products. And all we wanted to do today was just let um, all of our friends know and all the people who attend our webinars answer a few questions. We've been really excited about it. And I think it just demonstrates NextGen's move to continue moving forward in this environment. So as we end every web webinar, if you're uncertain where your practice stands or you have questions, we can help you by address, assessing your current readiness, no matter what product you're on, uh, providing recommendations, and we can assist with the implementation of new processes and procedures. We are also offering macro packages for fundamentals, intermediate, and experts. And we can explain those to you And if anyone has an interest in those areas. But you might want to consider that if you're struggling with macro or where to go next.
And finally, the next steps. You can visit us at itentive.com. You can continue to attend our webinars, and, our, and we will continue to send you our blogs. You can consider some of our three-day fixed-price on-site consultations. And then you can test drive our products, chart our refund manager, and so on. So I guess now we will turn it over to questions. Great. Thank you, ladies, and thank you, everybody, for joining us today. Again, if you have questions, you can type them in the questions area of the webinar control panel, and we're just going to go through them in the order that we received them. At the moment, we only have three, so I'm guessing that if you have questions, we'll be able to answer them all, so please don't hold back. Uh, first question, is there a sandbox account we can get our hands on to try and mimic our current next-gen EHR workflows? There is not a typical sandbox. Now, that, now uh, MetaTouch does have that available, and you can certainly get demonstrations arranged. And then depending upon its viability or if it's something that would be of interest to you, you could work with uh, your next-gen representative, I'm sure, to be able to play with it. I know, it's, I know it can be accommodated, but it's not just a standard thing that I could say, okay, go here and log in and you get to play. So that would ha have to be something you would research and be at a certain point to be uh, eligible to have one set up for you, but it can be done. Great. Thank you, Cindy. Next question, Cindy, this one's probably for you as well. Is there a legend that maps the current next-gen EHR to MetaTouch? As I mentioned earlier, we do have a conversion. We had a couple of, we had a couple of clients that uh, wanted to move into this environment, and it was actually independent of this. As you know, this was a product next-gen acquired, and we worked very closely. So there is a conversion from next-gen to MetaTouch, and it's actually quite effective because next-gen wrote it. So again, it was very, very positive. In terms of just saying like a chart or a graph, no, there isn't anything like that, although I would intend, I would imagine that someday that will be forthcoming. Great. Thank you, Cindy. Um, last question at the moment. Looks like this one would probably be a good one for Jordan. So as a provider, can I access MetaTouch on my cell phone and document there? So oh, no, um, you don't have direct access on your phone for the chart itself. The, from your phone, you can view your schedule and you can send refill requests. Great, thank you for that clarification. But you can access, but you can access it, okay. <laughs> okay, well if you have any questions that occur to you at a later point, uh, you see everybody's information up on the front, Lindsay's, Jordan's, and, and Cindy's, they're all on the slide right now. Uh, otherwise, I'm going to be sending out uh, a copy of this recording and the slides within the next week, so you can always reply to that email as well. Basically, any way you can get a hold of us, please don't hesitate to ask questions. We really are here to help, and we're really excited about this product, and we'd love to, to chat more about it. So thank you all for joining us today, and I hope you have a, a wonderful remainder of the week. Thank you, everybody. Goodbye. Thank you.